Hello and welcome to the Quiver channel. I am Jason, your host. Well, it's finally here, the day. Uh, I don't cry much anymore. I think I probably cried myself out when Paola died. But I know this is going to hit me badly. Torres he is. Beryl's just been sick. I think basically her body isn't. I think her body isn't. Oh, I think she might want to be sick again. Yeah, I think her body is just not feeling it anymore she's I think what's happened is the cancer has just moved into different places in her body well to start with it was encapsulated in her liver and in her bowels and doing and moving very slowly because at that point it started to definitely move to other places in her body Bertie, come here. Uh, I'm just... Beryl has had a good life. Very good life. She's even, I mean, she lost her eye long ago when she did something silly in the house. Well, not... She was just playing about in the kitchen in the other house. And she just spun around and just caught her eye on the desk, the table leg. And it detached the retina. And when the vets talked to us, they said, well, we can try to save the eye but that the chances aren't good that we'll save the eye and it'll we'll have to then remove it if and it'll cause her pain if it doesn't work And she was fine after that. She's never really been ill at all. Apart from this last six months where we had a checkup. Because even though I can't go out, even though I can't go to vets easily and that, I've always made sure that vets could come out and check the dogs and that. I've always looked to I've had dogs all my life and dogs, they've always been companions. And I've always put them first. I remember when um, we were going through COVID right at the start and Beryl was and Bertie were my priority for food before me. I would always put when when they the amount of different types of food was really cut down on the shopping list and especially online shopping because everybody was ordering doing online shopping remember i'd been online shopping for years and years and years because i had been locked in for a very long time so once everybody else started ordering stuff online the shelves became quite pretty bare and it became very hard to get shopping and you were limited like three packs of this particular item and so on you can only get three packs of spaghetti it got so bad at some certain times but i always put the dogs first i always made sure that they had food even now i always make sure that there's like 
two and a half months to three months worth of food in the house for the dogs. I pretty much used up any kind of budget I had spare this month and I probably will even feel it next month as well. But I have always made sure that my dogs are okay and any problems I've always had a vet, a local vet, vet that comes out to my house. He was a very good vet because he always tells me the truth. I've always said to him, just like I always want to know to make sure that I'm not putting my thoughts and my feelings before my dogs. Because after all, dogs, cats, all kind of pets, they give their all to us. They accept us for who we are. They don't care about our latest problems. They don't care about what our social standing is or how much money we have. How many friends we have. They love us. And how can we do any less for them? I've always seen it's a good measure of people is how they treat their animals. So today, I don't know whether I'll be buying any. I did want to buy an extra meal today. Um, but I think I'll just cook up some sausages. I've probably just got enough in the bank to cover the actual Right, is it? Yeah, that'll probably do. Yeah, it's time for Beryl to rest. And as always, what I'm going to do is I'll hold Beryl in my arms while they give the injection. I've, n I've never wanted to take a, a dog to... Only one of my dogs has had to be put down at a vet's because he was fitting and we had to take him in and he wouldn't come out of the fit most of my dogs have lived to very old age I mean people say that, they, that my dogs don't get enough exercise because I don't leave the house now but anybody who knows my two dogs knows they run around, they look after each other. They, if they want to play and they go in the backyard, we have a nice big backyard for them. And they're at an age where they don't want to go out on long journeys anymore. I mean, every time my dogs go out in the backyard, if I'll go out with them. And if they want to stay out there and play, they can stay out there and play. But they're usually the only ones that want to go to <laughs> get back inside where it's warm. Yes, Bertie. Ed Bertie's here. Mm. 
I am going to miss her so much. It's time for it to rest. Keeping it going any longer would be cruel. Would be putting my needs, my not wants, before hers. Think. Don't mean Beryl. Beryl. See her ears, she doesn't hear very well at all anymore. I put one of her favourite videos on the screen. She likes watching cat watching cat videos, where there's hamsters and things like that on the screen. As you can see, she used to love to spend time on my lap. This was like her favourite thing. Of course she'd climb onto the actual desk and then she'd start sticking her nose up. But my monitors were always, always had nose marks on them and dog slobber on them because she would basically, she saw it as a magic window out on the world. See, normally Beryl would be clambering to get on my desk now. She'd be struggling to get on my, she'd be on my desk and then try, and if she couldn't, she'd try to push through the screen and then she'd try to go round the back and see if the animals were in the back. I think it's chinchillas on this video. Lots of chinchillas running around and eating seeds and vegetables and... She hasn't even got enough. She can't keep her legs, back legs up anymore. Yeah, she was. She Beryl's always been one of these rare dogs that always loves games and things. It's like, and she always recognised animals in games very well. Um, some of my very old videos of me playing the long dog, the wolves in the distance, and the deer and the rabbits in the distance. She would go crazy to get on the desk and get to them. The spirit is willing, but the body is failing, isn't it, baby? <sighs> 
Come on, you go rest. Oh. Yep, today's going to be rough. But it is what it is. I always connected to animals far more than humans. I think it was another one of my special interests. Um, we all know about my technology, love of technology. Uh. Oh, God. And Beryl and Bertie are part of my legacy and my link both with Paula and my mum. You see Bell and Bertie were the last dogs that were a joint rescue by me, my mum and Paula. Um, you've all seen the picture of Beryl sitting with Paula let me see if I can find another picture of her this picture was taken in the other house when funnily enough you can see how the radiator was brand, were brand new that my mum had bought me Paula was in hospital overnight and Bella Beryl had decided that Paula's new riser recliner chair was hers. And so I sent this picture to Paula when she was in hospital. And Paula was like, please don't don't let her claw my thingy because she had a she had been putting together a blanket. That she had been knitting. But this is Paula and Beryl were very close. Very close. This was before we set up the room in the other house for Paula losing losing Beryl saying goodbye to Beryl is saying goodbye to um, another connection With Paula and with my mum, because dog dogs are amazing for people who have dementia. 
dogs don't judge the way dementia sufferers act. They don't judge them in any way badly. They are wonderful interactions. Um, I know that the home that my mum's in, I don't know if they still do, but they used to have a rescue dogs would come and interact with the people with dementia. And so Beryl and Bertie were the what well, we we had both dogs. Beryl was before because let me show you a picture of Rex. Rex was gorgeous. Rex, let me find Rex. Rex was the dog we had before Bertie and Bella, Beryl. Let's come on, Jason. Properties. Let's go to documents. Oh, yes, my my brain does work sometimes. That's fine. Rex was a giant dog. Sadly, he never got. He died in 2015 Rex did he had a stroke um, let me just find a picture of him scrolling back through Every dog is different. So we're just finding him. Give me a sec on there. He was a staffy. As I try to scroll through my hundreds upon hundreds of pictures. Okay. It's not in there. So it's got to be in this one. The one that I was in to start with. Seriously, Jason. Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> Once again, he loves spending time with Paola. He was such a gigantic dog when it came to... T when I used to walk Rex on the field late at night when nobody was around, anybody who came would just cross over to the opposite side of the street. Seriously, it was like they did not want to be around. He was always, he was always interrupting Paola if she was trying to craft. Rex was. <laughs> so... When Rex got old, I rang up Animal Lifeline and I said, do you have another dog that would complement um, an older dog that could 
help it have some more life because he was getting very old and wasn't moving around as much and so we took with my mum we took Rex over oh, you want to come up we took Oh, we took Rex over to Animal Lifeline, which we had had Rex from there as well, and just stood outside and they brought Beryl out. Now Beryl was actually a house dog at the charity. Sometimes they have dogs that don't fit in anywhere, that haven't found their forever home. You see, Animal Lifeline don't allow you to choose the dog. What they do is they vet you, they check you, they make sure you're the right fit, and then they pick some dogs that they know will go well with your family on that. They come and check your house out. They, they One of the people things people don't like about them, which is completely wrong, is they actually vet you. They, they do a check on you to make sure you're good for their dogs now some dogs like Beryl just never gelled so Beryl spent her first for after they had rescued Beryl they spent she spent like I think it was two or three years inside their house which wasn't a bad thing um, they have a main house at the actual charity and basically everybody adored her and everybody all the her workers and that and that so she had lots of care in that but then the first moment we brought beryl outside they brought beryl outside to meet bertie they just wagged tails sniffed each other and that was it that was just so we ended up bringing beryl home this was about the time that my mum dementia started to kick in so um Bertie then not not Bertie, Rex died because Beryl was six years old. Rex died. Uh, he, he did go a lease of life. I mean he Rex absolutely adored Beryl. And so when he passed away, Beryl was very sad, even though they'd only been together about less than a year. And I said to do you have do you have another dog that needs a home someone who doesn't fit in anywhere that you think would go okay with with Beryl and so I said he says he says why don't you bring him because I don't leave the happy car this was yeah I'm sorry my uh, my phone's not um, doing too well at the moment for some reason he hasn't connected properly so i'm sorry about the juddery video but I'm not going to redo this video no way and so we how we did it was this open the back door open the front door so and beryl was in the house and could leave into the back door if she didn't like this new dog and Bertie came in and Beryl just went up to him sniffed him they wagged tails and they were both went into the backyard and I think it was Steve from Animal Lifeline said okay yep yep I'll bring the paperwork next time I visit and they stayed So oh, yeah. <sighs> what can you do? I hope you're all having a good day anyway.